Hey community, I hope you are doing well. This is Elemental Mirror Podcast and it feels so good to be back. Happy New Year. I hope that you had the best Christmas and the best New Year and we are now jumping right into new podcast episodes. I've been debating how I wanted to do this for so long and I feel like now I am finally doing them the way that I've always, always wanted to do them. I just didn't know it at the time. (laughs) But we finally figured it out and that is to chit chat with you do like streams of consciousness, you know, receive little downloads and messages and talk about specific things, but then also to pull some tarot cards and oracle cards, and I'm also in the process of making my own oracle cards, and I want to be able to pull them on camera with you and just see what comes through, you know, and chat about some things, because there's actually been a lot going on in my life and I just haven't really updated you guys on it, but I thought what better way to do that than to actually film a podcast episode and we're also doing it on video now as well, which I did try out a little bit last year, but I wasn't sure what the hell I was doing, to be honest. You know when you have to trial and error certain things just to come up with what you actually prefer? And that is what I've been doing probably for the last like six years or something. But now I feel like I actually know what I want and I know who I am and I know what I enjoy. And I bought this new microphone and we have a new setup and we're just gonna sit down and chit chat and yeah, talk about some things, because one of the things I feel like I need to address before we even get into this episode is the fact that I've changed my name. So, where to begin with this situation? Basically, Zana, right? My music artist name was Zana, and I created that name in 2017 when I was in an abusive relationship and if you have watched some of my videos in the past I have a full video about that relationship and things that happened and stuff but one of the good things (laughs) that happened in that awful rock bottom kind of time in my life was that I created the name Zana and I created the social media for her and I just Oh, I've been itching to do something to do with music for years and I was in girl groups and all kinds of things and was really just trying to find my way and figure out what I wanted to do and I created the name Zana I actually got it from the word Xanax you know the antidepressant because to me music is like an antidepressant you know it can get you through so many difficult times so I got the name from that and I just dropped the x on the end But if you've been with me since back then, you will know from my vlogs especially that a lot has changed in that time and for like the last year it just didn't resonate anymore, like I don't know, I just didn't really vibe with it, I didn't feel like it was very me anymore and I always wanted a one word name for music, you know, like Beyonce and Rihanna and all of these, like I just love that it's cool and I really wanted it and then when I came up with Zana I was so excited about it and stuff but then throughout the last year maybe even two years but especially 2023 with having my daughter I just felt like I needed a new start like I just needed to shed the old skin it just didn't feel like me anymore and yeah And to be honest, when you look on social media, like on the music streaming apps, there's a lot of Zanas on there. I don't know if they all pronounced the name exactly how I did, but there's just so many people that it was really hard to even find me anyway. So that was annoying me. But then also the fact that the name just didn't, it didn't resonate anymore. And I really wanted a fresh start. And so I went back and forth on it for the last year and actually went to attempt changing it several times, but just didn't go through with it. And then at the very end of last year, I'm like, we need to do this now. Like the decision is made. I really need to do this. And just, it literally felt like shedding old skin. Like I just needed to release that old chapter of all of the self-doubt, all of the back and forth with all of my content, you know, you can see the whole process when you go back through my YouTube channel, because in some of those old videos where I'm sitting there talking about different things, 
I'm just so awkward and uncomfortable and you can just tell that I'm not comfortable in my own skin and I just like oh I was just so nervous and just ugh. and it makes me feel uncomfortable watching it you know but I still leave it up there because it shows the progression you know if you're starting from ground zero you're not necessarily going to be that comfortable on camera and that is totally fine you have to start where you're at and just roll with it and that is what I did but there was a lot of sop art a lot of removing videos and like spending so much time on them and then taking them back down a few weeks later you know so yeah it just didn't resonate anymore and I spent the whole year trying to come up with a different name because I didn't know what the hell to use and my real name is just too basic you know it's just too common and normal to use for music so I wanted something different and actually it was my partner Ben that came up with this name and we pronounce it as Azania because I still wanted Zana to be in it but I just wanted it to be something else that felt more girly more feminine more me you know, a little Pisces energy, I wanted like celestial and delicate and I don't know, I just wanted something else, okay, but I wanted Zana to still be in there and um, Ben came up with this name because it's kind of a playoff of our daughter's name as well, but still keeps Zana in there, so yeah, we're going with Azania, and I have been working on so much bloody music, and I am so excited to share it with you, so this is like a brand new chapter, when I'm filming this, there is a new song coming out next week, so there's a lot happening, and I just feel more me, you know, I just feel more, oh, like, just having my child has really changed how I view life, and I didn't know that it would take that for this to happen and this whole episode is just turning into me rambling about myself right now but there's just a lot to catch you up on before we go into other topics and I talk about like things that you might be going through but honestly like having my child seriously has completely changed my whole perspective on life because I spent so many years saying that I didn't want children yet, like honestly, I probably spent the past 15 years saying, no, maybe not 15, that's a little bit extreme, I'm aging myself now, okay, maybe like 10 years, I spent the past like 10 years constantly saying, I can't have children until I am successful, I can't have children until I'm earning a living through my music, until I'm like successful from, through my music, and all of those things, and just constantly in lack, and restricting myself, and caging myself in, and then I've gone and had a child, accidentally, might I add, it was not planned, but I've gone and had a child, and actually, it was exactly what I needed, because that whole lack mentality and valuing all of these things that weren't really important has completely changed and now I know what's important like now life just has a whole different meaning and yeah I mean I would say I recommend having a child but actually no I won't recommend that because if you're not ready for it you shouldn't do it because it's bloody hard work it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life but it's also the most rewarding and it's brought so much meaning to life that I didn't realise would happen like I couldn't have imagined the meaning that she's brought to my life quite honestly so it's just really changed how I view creativity and how I view myself I guess and how I view life and my life and the joy in my life you know I think I just valued a lot of things that didn't really mean anything or I thought meant something but now when I perceive it from this angle it's like oh like external validation is nothing you know people's opinions is nothing literally it's it's so irrelevant even when it's something creative that you're trying to do you know like there's billions of people in this world so obviously there's going to be people that don't like what you create but at the same time there's your tribe that's out there waiting for you that need what you have to offer and you don't have to hold yourself back or hide or shrink because you're worried about reaching people or reaching the wrong people you know like there are people that actually want what you have to say and want what you create and they actually need it in a way so you can just be you and just trust in that and allow it to unfold and of course you're gonna come across people that don't like you and all of that stuff and that's fine 
but just holding on to your own sense of self like I think that's what I'm really coming into now this last year is just who I am and what matters to me and what I want out of life and now that is my focus so there is so much new music coming and I'm so ready and actually so excited to film these podcast episodes because for a minute there it just kind of became like a bit of a chore and again that is when you start putting other people's like what they might want to hear and what you think will be accepted and all of that when you start putting that ahead of who you are and what you want you literally suck the life out of yourself like you literally lose your joy you know and I've spent so many years dealing with depression and not really wanting to be here like not that I would ever do anything about that but I just didn't really have that like spark for life I didn't I don't know I just felt very numb and empty and just didn't care about life and didn't understand what life was or why we were here and all of that you know it was very numb and empty and oh just going through that and moving through that it meant that all of the content I was creating constantly came from that place you know like I was constantly trying to people please and trying to be accepted and trying to create for other people and then there was no joy in it you know like there was no joy in making music because I never felt good enough and now that I'm allowing myself to create what I want and creating the music that is me just telling my story of the different things I've been through like that is so exciting and just brings so much joy and it's so therapeutic even when I'm writing negative things it's so therapeutic that I just feel like I'm finally finally in my element and I really want the same for you honestly because like if you're going through depression or if you're just struggling with life and just not happy with your life, like I genuinely have been there and it wasn't even that many years ago. And my life now is just so, so different that sometimes I have to pinch myself, you know? And I'm not even where I wanna be because I'm not like financially free and you know, I don't have tons of money and all of that. I'm not exactly where I wanna be. And I don't think we ever really will be because there's always something new that you can strive towards, but there's joy. Do you know what I mean? Like there's just, there's so much to live for and all of my goals actually excite me now. Whereas before I used to be like stressed about them and unhappy with them, even though it's a goal. Like surely a goal would be something that's exciting because it's something that you want. But I never felt that way. I always felt like it was a burden or like like my goals were a sign that I wasn't good enough because I wasn't where I wanted to be. You know, it felt like once I get where I want to be, then I'll be worthy. And now I'm realizing like, nope, 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 nope. We're not doing that to ourselves anymore. We have spent long enough treating ourselves like absolute shit. And we are not doing that anymore. We are now going to really prioritize the way that we speak to ourselves and the things that we allow in our lives and the joy that we bring in and stuff and just letting ourselves live. (laughs) letting ourselves enjoy life and enjoy what we're here to do you know and that doesn't have to be creating things like you don't have to be an artist or a music artist or a writer oh sorry I'm just pulling my trousers up I just realized I'm doing that on camera what the fuck my bad I haven't filmed in a while I forgot (laughs) but anyway um yeah like it doesn't mean that you have to be a creative person or an artist or anything like that in order to enjoy yourself and to love your life but like I don't know just finding things that you enjoy finding things that you want to do that is a game changer and I really feel like a lot of the times when we're depressed it's because something in our life needs to change like there's something in your life that you're really unhappy with and you just haven't changed it yet and a lot of the time we end up so numb and caught up in our heads that we don't actually know or have any awareness of what that thing is that needs to change you know like it could be so many different things it could be a relationship or it could be like a lifestyle choice and sometimes we get so lost and so weighed out so weighed down by our thoughts that we don't realize that actually it's that relationship that's causing the issue or actually it's that choice that you keep repeating that's causing the issue you know like really 
the key is honestly to be in a healthy relationship with yourself so that you know all of these things like so that you have this awareness and you can build that type of awareness you know but yeah so I feel like pulling an oracle card I got this deck at Christmas my mum got it for me so I just feel to shuffle a card right now and I don't know where these podcasts are going to go like what direction how this is going to unfold I'm just finding my own little flow because this is something that I've always always wanted to do and on my YouTube I have one video where it was a um, pick a card tarot reading and then I stopped doing it after that literally I did one <laughs> one and then I left it but over the past few years like reading tarot and pulling cards is just so fun to me it's just something that I've always wanted to do and as you know from tons of my videos I always just have like a video title or a video idea and then I wing it and whatever comes out comes out so for me to be able to pull these cards and just kind of wing it and go with whatever needs to come through for people like oh I finally found who the fuck I am <laughs> I feel so excited. So we're just gonna pull a card because I feel in the vibe to do so. And we're gonna see what the hell comes through for you guys and what message is necessary right now. Probably along this line of everything that I've been saying. Ooh, take a break. A life's work, not a season. Get off the treadmill. <laughs> oh damn. I mean, yeah, that is what I actually just did. And I feel like a lot of us probably did that because we just had Christmas. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course, we took a break. <laughs> well, actually, to be fair, some people probably didn't, but should have taken a break. But to me, what's coming through with this is to get off the treadmill. Oh, man, why do these messages always hit right in the flipping feels? That is, I feel like that has been my life summed, summed up is like, capitalism and I've made so many videos about capitalism before and the rat race and survival mode and this literally just comes right on back to it is that so many people are depressed because they are in survival mode and because they are chasing money literally you know like they're either chasing money in order to have financial freedom or they're chasing money because they need to survive and have their basic human needs met and so many people are living in this rat race and we get so bloody lost and don't even know who we are we don't know what we want we don't know what life is like how can you find your joy if you never spend time with yourself and your thoughts if you don't like to sit still if you're constantly like distracting yourself and going on your phone or watching tv or you know going out here there and everywhere and being busy 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 then how are you ever going to know what your joy is you know and I feel like this is actually a really important message because I was just talking about creativity and finding your joy and doing things that you love and so many people don't know what that is you know, like, it's something that literally feels so separate from you and so vague and so unrealistic to experience joy in your life, you know? Like, that's definitely happened to me where the thought of happiness and the thought of joy feels unrealistic. It feels like it's too big a thing or like it's too wishy-washy or like just too far away and like you can never grasp it you know like the idea of happiness can definitely seem like it's a um abstract uh concept or like just something so far removed from the everyday person's life and what I want to say to you is like happiness is a moment to moment thing right happiness is not something that you just suddenly get it's not like it's not something that you can co constantly chase and strive for because you're never going to reach it because it's not in the future and it's not it's not part of time like it's just I don't even know how to put this into words I'm just flowing with whatever comes out but like for what I've experienced myself happiness literally is right now you know it's like where are you right now what are you doing right now what's happening right now like me sitting here filming this video brings me a sense of joy and excitement and when you experience that on a continuous basis like it might not happen in every single moment obviously because you're going to experience low emotions but when you experience joy 
frequently, that gives you that feeling of happiness. It's like experiencing excitement and joy. And this can come from so many different things, like spending time with family. That, I never used to enjoy that. And I don't even know why, not just family, but friends too. Like my mind would wander off to just random things and I would be so up in my head and I wouldn't be present with people and they'd be talking to me and I wouldn't even take in what they're saying half the time like I didn't even hear it but you know when you're kind of like you do that whole yeah yeah but you're not really listening that would happen to me all the time and I just wouldn't pay attention and I'd be off in my mind thinking about other things probably negative thoughts most of the time and when that happens like you're missing out on so much joy and so much happiness and it's only now when I'm really listening to people and I'm engaging in the conversation that I find like a a more sense of fulfillment or like a more sense of satisfaction and excitement because actually I realise oh I have things in common with this person that I didn't even realise was there or like I'm learning new things, even about different family members. I'm like, I'm learning about who they are and what they like and the way that they communicate and, you know, like the things that they enjoy and stuff and that, learning about them and then having them hold the space to ask me things about me and being able to express myself and be received and us to have this conversation is just like it's such a basic thing but I never realized how much I didn't ever experience that really probably throughout most of my childhood too because I was always so shy and so quiet and so reserved because I just cared so much about what people thought and I didn't want to be rejected pretty much so I just stay kind of quiet and stuff and it's only now as I'm starting to have these conversations even with people I've known my whole bloody life you know and I'm like oh this is bringing so much excitement and so much joy because we're actually connecting and we have things to talk about because I'm allowing myself to express myself and I'm realizing oh they actually like tarot cards or like food and health and fitness and stuff too and I didn't realize that they actually were interested in that because I never expressed it to them and I've never really paid attention to what they're saying either so I just didn't even know you know but like the more that you're present in the moment the more that you see things and you see things clearly and like it just really takes a slowing down and when we're in the rat race when we're on the treadmill when we're powering through and going 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 we're not noticing anything and actually having my daughter has really had to force me to be more present because Otherwise, I will miss all of her milestones and I won't even remember that they happened, you know? Like, I'm paying so much more attention because it's going so bloody fast and, like, it really shows you how fast time moves when you have a child. So, yeah, I really think it's just important to slow down and to come back into the present moment and to pay attention to everything that you're doing and don't get me wrong that does not mean that you're going to enjoy everything in life you know like there's still going to be difficult times there's still going to be bad things that happen and negative interactions and stuff that you didn't want like I'm not saying it's going to be perfect and I'm not saying that just being present is going to make everything incredible because it's not but it will definitely help you see the incredible things that are already there that you're not noticing you know and that's what's happened to me is that I didn't realize that all of these incredible things were already in my life and when I started to slow down I started to enjoy each moment more and I started to like look to do things that I would enjoy rather than just kind of plodding along and being miserable and just distracting myself with like TV shows and stuff. Now I'm sitting here filming this video about what's the time? Half eight in the evening and my daughter's gone to bed and if she wakes up I'm gonna have to run off and go and tend to her and stuff but like I could go to bed because I'm fucking tired because I'm still dealing with all of these nighttime wakes where she's only nine months old and stuff. So like there's a million things I could be doing right now. I could be watching TV and just chilling out and resting and maybe tomorrow night I will. But for tonight, I felt inspired to film and I knew that would bring me joy 
even when other situations have happened and I thought, oh shit, do I leave it? Do I wait for another day? And it's like, no, this is my joy. This is what I want to do. This is what's going to bring me happiness. So let me do more of that you know, and it doesn't have to drain you, it can be things that actually excite you when you allow yourself to be who you are, and when you believe in yourself, and you're kinder to yourself, and you let yourself do the things that you enjoy, regardless of what anyone else has to say, and regardless of any type of success level, or financial gain, or any of that shit, you're literally just doing what brings you joy, and that is honestly a game changer, and I didn't realise how simple it would be, how straightforward, but yet it's probably one of the hardest things because we are in a capitalistic society, you know, so the idea of slowing down, the idea of prioritising your joy can seem very far-fetched and very like, I have no fucking time for that because I've got bills to pay, I've got kids to raise, I've got food to cook, I've got the house to clean, yada yada yada, because there's always something else to add to our to-do list, you know, so it can seem like prioritizing your joy is just not possible, you know. And actually that was something that I felt like for a long time too, especially with working out as well. Oh my gosh, that's something I'm still trying to fit in and stuff. But I just realized like we're human, so you only have time for what you have time for, but you can prioritize what's important to you. And for a lot of people, loving themselves and experiencing joy is not important enough to themselves because either they don't feel like they deserve it, they don't feel like they're worthy of it, they don't feel like it's possible, so they just don't prioritise it, do you know what I mean? And actually, it's probably the most essential thing, you know, regardless of the job that you need to work and the million things on your to-do list, like being able to take care of yourself and being able to do things that actually excite you is the top priority like the housework can fucking well wait (laughs) and you go do something that brings you joy because then when you're in that high vibrational state then you'll be able to do all of the other to-do list tasks in a much more empowered and excited and like high vibrational state you know you'll feel better about yourself and about your life and it won't feel as daunting or as like chore based (laughs) to go and do the washing up or something you know because of course we still have to do the mundane we still have to do all of that stuff I I like a um so somebody I follow on Instagram her Instagram handle is called inspired to write and one of the t-shirts that she had printed was about doing art first and muggle shit later I love that like and actually not even just art shit but let me say joy shit let's do the joy stuff first and then all of the muggle shit can come later you know (laughs) and obviously you still have to work and you still have to do all of those things but in your free time when you come home you've got downtime instead of doing something to numb yourself why not do something that actually brings you joy and sometimes the joyful thing could be a film night you know it could be getting your favorite snacks and curling up on the sofa like if that's what brings you joy then do it you know it's going to be different for everyone and you're not going to want to create every night or you know like be productive every night whatever that means to you like resting is productive too so do what brings you joy is really what I want to say let's just look at the bottom of the deck (laughs) don't dim to fit in (laughs) well you be preaching oh and then the next one you're already doing it (laughs) so how are you dimming your light in order to fit in and then stop overthinking keep facing your true north exactly keep going after what you want keep going after what brings you joy after what you're passionate about what you stand for like I really feel like the key for everybody in life is to know themselves and to therefore know what they want out of life like why are you here you know let's turn this life into something that means something to you not to anybody else but to you like you're here for a reason you didn't just incarnate here for nothing and you certainly didn't incarnate here just to pay bills and then die so if you really want to change your life if you really want to experience more joy then it's actually time to sit with yourself and start thinking about this start 
hearing this from your own heart, like not just up in your head, overthinking and analyzing and then stressing yourself out, but actually just be present, be calm, relax, relax a little and sit with yourself and let the thoughts come, like let the mind go crazy, let the mind go here, there and everywhere because underneath all of that will actually be the answers of what you want and that doesn't mean it's just going to come to you in one instant but it could but it doesn't mean it necessarily will and you don't need to shame yourself if it doesn't you know like it could take you a whole year to figure out what you actually want and it can take you trialing and erroring and you know flowing through different things and that's totally fine but just like make it a priority if you're hearing this message and you're struggling, and you've tried everything else, and you've been depressed, and you've, you know, tried shaming yourself into doing things, and you've tried being mean to yourself, and you've tried forcing yourself to get up, and be motivated, and be productive, so why not try being kind to yourself, and being compassionate, and actually allowing joy to guide you, like why not allow joy to be your true north like this says keep facing your true north why not allow that to be joy and like it goes in baby steps you take it one step at a time so in this moment what's going to bring me joy a tub of ice cream is going to bring me joy (laughs) and you go and do that you know and then in the next moment okay what's going to bring me joy now well a nice bath might bring me joy. And then you try that. And then what's going to bring me joy next? Going and having a hug from the person that I love, you know, or like whatever it is, it can be little things. It does not have to be these huge goal oriented, massive monumental things in order to bring you joy. It can be the simplest, littlest thing like putting your pajamas on and snuggling up under a blanket. You know, it could be such subtle things that can bring such a deep sense of excitement and joyfulness and passion and you know like it's just the little things and they really do add up and that's what I've come to understand for myself is that when you experience those little moments on a day-to-day basis they add up to so much joy and then more ideas come and then the bigger goals and you know all of the huge things that you actually want to do they start to um, fill your mind like the ideas start to come and then the ways to get there will start to present itself too you know like sometimes we just expect to have all of these answers instantly and then we expect to have the full staircase and the whole like steps of how to get from a to b to just be a crystal clear path and to know how we're going to do it and that's really not life if you look at the majority of people they have no idea how they're going to get from a to b but when you start taking these baby steps, more of the staircase reveals itself. I'm sure I've seen that quote somewhere. (laughs) I don't know whose quote that was, but anyway, I've just uh, reused that for a second, because if you just really focus on moment to moment, filling up some joy in each moment with different things, and being more present and slowing down, honest to God, your life will change. I honestly, it is exactly what I've done, and it was not something that I planned to do, it was not intentional, I didn't know that that's how I would find joy, it just sort of happened with having my child, because she forced me to slow down, because with the complete tiredness, you know, sleep deprivation, I wasn't able to create as much as I used to, before I would have like 12 hours a day, to make music, or to film videos, or to do whatever I wanted, and I hated every second of it, like, I was constantly mean to myself in my head, my thoughts were so negative, I was always shaming myself and punishing myself with everything that I created, you know, and I was working constantly, if you look at some of my vlogs, I was working a normal job, and then I was doing my creative stuff afterwards, but I was really mean to myself the whole time, so I was never satisfied, I never liked anything that I made, half the songs I've ended up removing afterwards because I didn't like them, and yeah, it just was not fun, you know, and now I get an hour, maybe two, maybe three hours a day maximum to do what I love, and I'm enjoying it, you know, because the pressure is off, I'm allowing myself to just enjoy creating, because I've got these little windows where I can do it, and I'm no longer creating for other people, I'm no longer trying to get accepted, or trying to you know, receive validation or any of that shit, I'm just simply 
doing what brings me joy, you know, following my joy. And that's gonna look different for everyone. So I'm not saying that you need to get on YouTube and do that or anything like that. You need to do what, what brings you joy. And that can be in all areas of life too, you know, like art for me is just something that I've always, always been passionate about and not just music, although that is a huge part of it, but also like creating jewellery and I'm creating oracle cards and filming videos and stuff like there's just so many things that I love, love, love doing and I can't niche down, I can't be caged and put in a box because that's just not me, you know, I like doing a million things at once, that's just who I am and I'm not doing it to people please anymore, I'm doing it because it brings me joy and it's exciting and I like it, so I'ma do it and you need to do what you want to do and what brings you joy and that could be absolutely anything because other things that bring me joy, which never used to but working out I actually really like it it really helps my thoughts to try and like unravel a bit and calm down and so many creative ideas have come to me while working out and I've also been meal prepping a lot for me and my daughter like I've been so healthy and consistent with home cooking I made my own bread tonight <laughs> It helps that obviously I'm with her dad, like Ben was watching her for me so I could go and make some bread for us and yeah, like I feel like I'm just showing my age right now because, you know, <laughs> I'm now like home baking stuff and everything and not something I ever imagined I would be doing but here we are, it actually brought me deep sense of satisfaction to create my own healthy bread and I really liked the taste of it and so did my child and if she likes it then I know it's good so it's all good <laughs> but yeah just like doing things that bring you joy doing things that you actually want to do and also being able to explore because maybe you don't know what you want to do right now maybe you're not sure and that's also okay you have to try things do you know how many things I have tried <laughs> and then gone back on there were so many things that I have started and then abandoned there is so many songs that I have started and then abandoned you know and videos that I have started even vlog footage I have vlog footage from last year that I have not finished editing like there is a lot of things that I have tried to do realized I didn't really enjoy it and then stopped you know and some of it comes from self-doubt but some of it also when I really look at it is things that I just didn't enjoy and I think having that self-awareness again that will develop when you try like you have to just try the thing paint the picture you know you're not painting it for anyone else you're just painting it for you you can just try it squiggle some little doodles down if that's what you want to do you just do it and it doesn't matter whether it's good or not. It doesn't matter if it's the shittest fucking drawing you've ever seen in your life. You're just doing it because you feel like doing it. And if in that process of doing it, that brought you a bit of joy, then it was worth it. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have to go anywhere. Nobody has to see it. It doesn't matter whatsoever. And that's what I really want to reiterate. Like, it does not matter. You can do whatever the hell you want. You know, your joy is the most important thing and it doesn't matter what that looks like to anybody else and it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter how many things you try or how many things you fail at you can just do it because it's what you want to do and that is reason enough that is the only reason you need is because you want to do it so just try the things and do what you want to do because honestly it's just so important and I feel like so many people are deeply unhappy, deeply depressed and they're just not living a life that they want and it's sad, you know, like, and I was there so I, I get it, I get why it happens but it's just sad that that's what happens, <laughs> it's sad that that's the norm but also at the same time I feel like so many people are obviously changing this now, like, too many of us have been depressed for too long and we're not satisfied with living that kind of life. So we're searching videos like this and we're looking for different ways to get ourselves out of it essentially. And that is powerful too because, you know, there's only so long that you can go on being miserable and un unhappy for before something has to give. Ooh, justice. <laughs> oh yeah, and what's at the bottom of the deck? Queen of Swords. I just feel like you need to truly, truly and utterly get clear on things. Like truly and utterly 
look at your life, remove emotion from it for a second and just really look at your life. Like if you were if you were an outsider looking in or if you were a parent looking at your child or, you know, like if you were a stranger looking at your life, really just look at it and see what needs to change. Like look at it and see the areas that are bothering you. See the areas that are causing you stress. See the areas that are upsetting you. When you really look at your life, what is it about it that makes you unhappy? And you might need to spend some time on this. You might need to journal it or something. But really, like, what is it about your life that makes you unhappy? Because there's only so long that you can go on living like this. There's only so long that you can allow all of these things to constantly push you down, to constantly weigh you down and make you miserable. You know, whether it's situations, whether it's people, there is only so long that you can stay absolutely unhappy for before you have to do something about it. And only you can change it, unfortunately. I wish that we could just flick a switch and somebody else can come along and miraculously transform it. But like, you have to do it for yourself. So there's got to come a point where you've spent enough time being miserable. And now it's like, okay, let's actually look at this now, let's really look at this life, look at these experiences, look at everything and what is it about your life, whether it's in the present or in the past or even something that you're scared of in the future, what is it that's making you deeply unhappy and what is it that makes you fear things, you know, and also tuning into your emotions because that will give you so many more messages of like, what is it you're feeling, When you look at your life, when you look at the things that make you unhappy, what other emotions come up? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it sadness? Is it heartbreak? Like, what else are you worrying? What else comes up with the, like, depression or with the sadness and with the unhappiness? What else comes up? And really just have a look at that because there's so many answers waiting for you to just like open the door you know this is what shadow work is there's just so many things that are calling for your attention and if you've been unhappy for a long time like is it enough now I felt like it's enough now well I felt like it was enough for myself and I had to do something about it but that was not a quick and easy process so I'm not trying to belittle it or say that it's going to be simple and fast and all of that like it takes time but the way that you're living right now also is sucking the life out of you and also is taking up your time so like you know, pick a side kind of thing, which thing would you rather do? Would you rather continue on in this cycle being absolutely miserable? Or do you want to take a look at things and delve into the shadow work and looking at your life, looking at your experiences, dealing with your traumas? Like, do you want to take that road? And yeah, actually, it it might actually be harder than staying in depression, to be honest, because it's not fun to have that kind of self-awareness, especially if you're going to delve back into past situations. But my God, when you do it, oh, it is a game changer and you will transform your life, even if it's baby steps, you know, gradual process, baby steps. But so, so much can shift in that. And I just feel like this is such an important important thing for people to realize and to grasp and then to actually take action on is like only you can save yourself unfortunately but it's just the truth and yeah I just feel like there's only so long that you can stay miserable for before something's got to give and you need to be able to really like make a change because again depression is about changes need to be made And if you're unhappy, what kind of changes are you going to make then? You know, what are you going to do about it? Oh, (laughs) eight of cups. It's time to leave the old shit behind. And also we have the nine of pentacles, which to me is all about self-worth. It's all about knowing who you are, knowing what you want, knowing what you have, seeing the luxury and the joy and the like fulfillment and excitement and everything that you have around you. Like 
just filling up your own cup, you know, realizing that actually there are a lot of things in your life that do fill up your cup, but that you just haven't been either allowing yourself to do or you haven't recognized that is there, you know? So just, oh, (laughs) it's just a lot, isn't it really? (laughs) Honestly, life is just so complicated you know, and it's only when I sit here talking about it, because this is the first time that I've done a video like this, and it's only when I sit here talking about it, and I, like, delve into, um, different things that I've done, and things that I recommend, that I'm like, god damn, it's so easy to say all of this stuff, but when you're in those moments, and you're feeling so low, like, there, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, do you know what I mean, like, you can't even see the walls of the goddamn tunnel, so how are you meant to know that you're in a tunnel, (laughs) do you know what I'm saying, like, it's just, it's such a dark, dark place to be in, and so many people are in it, and I just find it really sad, and I find it, like, I just want to fix it for you, (laughs) I just want to, like, grab everyone, and make everything better, and it all be fine, and everyone to just experience joy, and to just love their life, but I know that I can sit here saying that until I'm blue in the face, like, I can give you step by step of how to do it forever, you know what I mean, like, I can sit here forever saying it all, but when you're in that dark place, it's very hard to take even the first step, it's very hard to even realise that those steps are legit, you know, and that they're actually going to get you there, because it can definitely feel like that's not going to happen, and it's unrealistic, and you don't feel like it, and what's the point, kind of thing, and remember that's a phrase I used to say a lot, was like, what's the point, because it just didn't feel like life had any meaning, to be honest, and yeah, if you're feeling like that, I I hear you, and I know, but actually, there can be a lot of meaning, it's just that you have to give it meaning, like, the meaning comes from you, it doesn't come from anybody else, it's what means something to you, it's what matters to you, and when you're in that space, nothing matters, and it doesn't feel like anything means anything, but again it comes back to slowing down and moving with intention and like really taking care of yourself because that's obviously the first thing that goes out the window when you're feeling unhappy and depressed is like self-care just leaves the building you know so like baby steps with that coming back to taking care of yourself coming back to gradually day by day moment by moment choosing things that are for the betterment of you, like, they're for your well-being and the greater good of your, yourself, your mental health, your spiritual, emotional, physical health, choosing those things, and sometimes I think you just have to hit a point, and that point will be different for everybody, but you just have to hit a point where enough is enough, and you're ready, do you know what I mean, and for me, that was getting in an abusive relationship, so I do not recommend that, I hope that it doesn't go as extreme as that to you, or for you even, but yeah, sometimes I feel like you just have to hit a point where something stirs up enough in you that it's just like, fuck this, I can't do it anymore, like, I need to make a change now, because this is just too much, this is just too shit, I need to do something, you know, and yeah, that definitely happened for me, and then even though it wasn't an overnight thing, and it took me, like, a good year of being in that situation before I finally left it, and leaving it was only the first step, you know, it wasn't even, like, it wasn't that my life just miraculously changed after I left, it was, like, now the real work begins, now the shadow work happens, now I need to look at why the hell I even got in that in the first place, let's trace this back to childhood, let's look at all my fears, let's look at the future, and what I'm worrying about with that, let's look at all of the goals, and the things that I want in my life that aren't here, and why they're not here, and why I hate my life, and, you know, why I don't want to be here, why I don't enjoy this, like, what is it, and what matters to me, what's important to me, what means something, honestly, it's just so much self-reflection, so much journaling that you really need to do to get these answers, and even when you get the answers, that doesn't mean everything is just incredible all of a sudden, you know, like, it takes work, and it takes daily effort, and daily practice, because to be honest, being kind to yourself 
is a practice. <laughs> when you have been trained or when you have trained yourself to be cruel to yourself and you've done that for years, being kind to yourself is gonna feel very, very weird. So it is a practice and it is a daily moment to moment thing of choosing your joy, of even getting clear on what the hell that is and being kinder to yourself and holding compassion to yourself and honestly it's just you know it's never ending and of course there's always more things to learn and more things to unravel for yourself and stuff so it's never going to be like uh I just feel like there's never going to be a finish line because there's always new goals there's always new things that you can be doing there's always new ways to evolve and change but hopefully the more that you do this the more like joyful experiences you'll have the more that you'll come out of that darkness and you'll be into like actually enjoying your day-to-day -day life even though your goals are still there and you know different things that you want to change still need to change but you're actually enjoying the journey of it you're enjoying the process of it you're you're liking being able to roll with it and experience the changes as they come rather than wishing that the change was right here in this instant you know like that's something I'm really really having to learn now with music is to enjoy the journey because there's always a new song to write there's always a new beat to make and new vocals to record and you know like I could be making music for the rest of my life if I really wanted to. There's always something that I could be writing about and singing about and creating. So just enjoying each song that I create is a game changer. And it's taken me so flipping long to get to this point that I just can't believe it was that all along. Even though I can believe it and I probably knew it all along, but it's just like wild. The, the difference in my emotions now that it's happening, now that I'm enjoying it, like I'm enjoying the journey of creating my art, I just feel so much happier because I'm not shaming myself all the time. I'm not punishing myself or like trying to make myself change it and be better at it and all of this stuff, you know. I really think it's the self-talk actually that makes us hate what we're doing and makes us hate the moments because it's all of the should be's and we should be doing this and we need to be doing that and why aren't we doing this and you should have done it like this and you know all of the should be's and must be's and all of that <laughs> and that's something my therapist told me actually which I also forgot about to be fair but yeah it's definitely the should be's that make us feel even more shit about the things that we're doing. So even when you find something that you enjoy, sometimes you can talk to yourself so negatively that it sucks the joy out of it and you no longer even enjoy it. So yeah, it's just a whole major process of needing to be kinder to yourself, needing to really look at what's important to you and what you want and then try things let yourself play you know let yourself enjoy life let yourself go out and try different things and experiment and then through that process you'll figure out what you actually like and what brings you joy you know it's all well and good saying oh do things that bring you joy but if you don't know what that is then you're not going to know what to do so trying different things you know if you feel like maybe cooking a meal might might satisfy you try it and if you absolutely hate it when you do it then you know that that's just not for you but at least you tried it and now you know do you know what I mean so I feel like the only way you're really gonna know is to actually experience it because we can think all of these different ideas all that we want but until you actually experience the process of creating it of bringing it from being a thought into a physical thing that is what creation is and until you experience and allow yourself to experience bringing your ideas into fruition like it's the experience of doing that that brings you the joy and you're not going to know if you'll enjoy the thing until you try it you know like you might think that you'll enjoy it but when you experience it it's a whole different ball game. So let yourself experience and try different things and just see what happens. And you might actually surprise yourself, you know? So yeah, <laughs> that is it for this episode. I feel like I'm gonna leave it there. But I really, really appreciate you watching and I'm so grateful for you sticking by me all of this time. Like, 
literally I created Zana in 2017, like I said. So it's been a very, very long time and it's been a lot of stop start and a lot of self doubt and not really believing in myself. And now I feel like I'm just so far out the other side that all there is for me to do now is just be me, you know, like all there is for me to do is to just create the way I want to create and try new things like pulling cards on camera and stuff. And if I don't enjoy it, then I just won't do it. And that's fine. But I did quite enjoy this to be fair. But I'm just gonna let you know now that I'm gonna be trying some things. And if I don't end up enjoying it, it won't be happening again. But that's fine. But one thing that definitely is happening is music because I am being so consistent with it. I am loving creating it. I feel like I'm finally finding my sound with it and I'm finding my flow with creating videos around my music as well. So there's just so much more coming very, very soon. And yeah, I just really appreciate all of your support, all of your streams of my music so far. And this is just the beginning because honestly, I'm really finding my sound and telling my story through it and it just feels so exciting and there's so much more to write about because a lot of my songs right now are about past experiences so there's a lot of new things that I could be writing about right now that I just haven't yet because I'm still writing about the old stuff because it's taken me so long to pluck up the courage to actually create my songs and release them so a lot of my songs that are coming out right now do not reflect my current life because they are about old toxic situations and relationships and stuff but I want to still put them out because they're still a part of me and a part of different chapters that I've been through you know so yeah if you're wondering why some of my songs are based in heartbreak when I'm in a healthy happy relationship that is why because I'm still putting out all of my old songs and I'm also writing new ones so stay tuned it is coming next week by the time you watch this a new song will be very close to drop in so yeah I appreciate you that is enough rambling I hope that you are doing well you can also join our telegram group chat because it's called shadow work in community and I always am posting a lot of different things in there just trying to get you guys thinking and opening up the conversation of different things about our lives and our mindset and our well-being and stuff so the link to that is down below if you want to check that out you can come and join in the conversation with everything to do with shadow work and ourselves and let's just create lives that we actually love and enjoy you know that is the goal and i hope that this episode helped you in some way and there's going to be more so stay tuned but yeah thank you so much for watching and i hope that you had the best christmas and new year and i will see you in the next episode bye